I can do a few things in life, but the one thing I cannot really do well is uh, sing songs. Uh, I don't know. I got uh, my daughter, Christina, is pretty good with the singing, and Janice is pretty good, and Juliana is pretty good, and she's even thinking about doing some songwriting, but uh, that's just uh, my talent. I don't know where they got that from. Um, but it's very clear that God says to make songs. And I'm looking at it and says, how do I make songs? I can't even do it. How do I even sing? I can't even do it singing. But you know, when you don't have something, it actually causes to compensate. You know how uh, some of the people are handicapped, a disabled person, and because they cannot do certain things, they know how to compensate. The other areas get developed. And it was just kind of amazing in the way in which God has made us. You know, making music is not just about with an instrument and with a vocal voice, but everything that we do, the words that you use unto others, gestures, decisions that we make, they're all making songs and ultimately making music. And we've been talking about a lot of different ways in which we can make music in our lives. But today, we're going to focus on doing the right thing, not just doing the things right. When you do the right things, you know, it really, really is making music to many people around us. You think the K-pop music is good. You think Mariah Carey is good. You could think, well, my favorite is Neil Diamond from the past. You think they're all good. But when you do the right things, man, they are good music. And that's something we want to listen again and again and again. Let me ask you, who wants to be a manager? Who wants to be a leader? We all need to be a manager. We all need to be a leader. They have to come together. But there is a clear distinction. Too often times, some of us will try to just be a good manager. I want to manage my household. This is the way it's going to be done in my house. This is the way that I'm going to manage my business. But there is a leadership aspect. What is the difference between the manager and leader? Well, here there are. The manager maintains the way it is, but the leaders, they develop. Manager focus on system. Leader focus on people. Manager has a short range view, but the leaders has long range perspective. Managers ask how and when should I get this thing done? Leaders ask what and why. Manager imitates. Leader originates. Manager does things right. They know how to get things done. They do things right. But the leader does the right thing. Huge and big difference. A good example of this is in the Bible Pharisees. They know or knew how to do the things right. They follow the system. They're saying that their system is that on the Sabbath day, you do not work. They try to do things right. They try to do their procedure right. But Jesus, on the other hand, went and healed the sick anyways on the Sabbath day. He did the right thing. Proverbs 21.3 says, to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than simply worshiping and sacrificing and offering. To do what is right and just, it's more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. 
sacrifice that includes worshiping and offering. And one of the best ways for us to make music in life is when you do the right things. Yes, you can make music when you do things properly, maintaining your house, your business, your procedure, your way, but you make even better and greater music, and you take that music to the next level when you do the right things in life. And God says to make music, God says in Psalm 33, 3, which is our uh, theme, Bible scripture for the series, on the heart of the music. Sing to him a new song and commends us, encourages us, inspires us to make music. I will sing and make music, Psalm 57, 7. We've been talking about this series the heart of music for so many weeks. There are many ways to, to make music. You can dwell in the house of the Lord to make music. Last week or two weeks ago, we talked about turning water into wine. A poet 300 years ago in England said, this means to me the significance of Jesus turning wine into uh, water into wine it's like water meets its master and it blushes. You see, when you meet Jesus, we change, we sing. That's when we make music. We make music when we make the grace that we have received from the Lord a profitable. We make music when you receive a vision from God after having shed tears as we go through difficult and tough times in life. We make music when we say, I can do everything in Christ. It gives me the strength. You know how much music that is to those who are sick and those who are facing challenges? When you encourage them by saying, we can do everything in Christ who gives us strength. Why Christ in everything? Because he has the ability to turn the water to blush, to change its color, to change into something that's tasteful. So today we're going to be talking about doing the right things. Our role, our responsibility as a believer is to do the right things all the time. Not just on Sunday, but all the time. And when you do that, the music will be flowing out of your body. I shared this last night, but I want to do it again. Five years ago, I find myself really, really difficult spot. So I found myself writing a letter that I have never thought that I would write. My engineers made a huge mistake, something that could end our business that we established at that time at least some 15 years. The big project that we have won in Florida during the most difficult time in the recession, when everybody was laying people off, and we decided not to, and I know God found favor in doing that. We won this project. That kept us going for a good two, three years. Kept the entire company uh, busy because it was a huge, huge project. It's a project for Marlins Stadium, a brand new one. The professional, the national uh, football, baseball. And we got that job. We were so excited and then when project was all designed, it was pretty much all completed. Four months prior to the opening game in April, we got our project done before the, the actual stadium was done. It consists of 6,000 
parking space with the retail all underground, under the first level, street level. The project was completed, superstructure with all the frames and all the columns, all completed. And at that time, I got a call from my office in Miami saying that there, uh, there, are, there is an unfortunate situation where there's many, many beams are cracking. And as days went by, more beams started to crack. And we found out later that just about every beam in one side, they were cracking. There were hundreds of them. The cost to repair would be astronomical. On June 5th, 1911, I found myself writing this letter to our client. Dear Jerry, I just want you to know that our hearts are heavy. Over the weekend, all of our senior engineers were working fervorously to come up with a proper remedial solution. I want you to know that we are doing everything we can. Jerry, yesterday I get all of my staff to a conference room and offer these prayers to them. That our souls will not be wounded that each of us will learn to take the responsibility of public health and welfare and safety very seriously. That we will draw closer to one another. That we acknowledge that our ability is limited. That true leaders will rise from this challenge. And that each of us will draw closer to our almighty God. Jerry, we are so, so sorry about this occurrence. All we can do is to give our very best during this remedial effort, and we will do. And I put my pen down, and I was in tears. The seriousness and the magnitude of this situation was just incomprehensible. To my world, it was like as if 9-11 just took place. Well, take a look at the significance, the size of this structure. It's on the screen. A couple of days later, I was ready, getting ready to uh, fly down to Miami. The night before, as I was packing my stuff, I wrote to my client a second letter. Cherry. Happy 4th July. I was reminded how the Eagles has become the American symbol. In the midst of many battles during the Civil War, our Union soldiers felt tired and defeated. One early morning, they woke up to the sound of eagles circling over their heads, reminding them that they too can be free, just like eagles. The eagles gave them the renewed strength. No words can describe how disappointed we are to have discovered that we have under-designed this structure. Jared, I want to thank you for your leadership during this time. You have allowed us to regain our strength to focus on the issues at hand. hand. It is not over yet. Far from it. However, I just want to express my thanks to you. We will fix it right. And it is my prayer that your organization and the city's name will not be tainted. I pray that spirit of our almighty God will hover over our heads to continue to strengthen us during this tough time. Then I landed in Miami next day. The following morning, I walked into this conference room. Just about everybody was already there with their lawyers. About 15, maybe 18 of them all together. I felt the chills in the room. 
I felt as, as if everybody's looking at me and saying, how could you do this? Do you know what is at stake here? We got this a major professional baseball game starting in the April. Entire state, entire Miami citizens are looking forward to that first game in April. This problem will definitely cause not to be able to open for the April game. For no one will be able to park the cars in that huge, humongous garages. Four of them that we have designed. But no one spoke. To break the ice, our client's lawyer stood up and said in front of everyone, and he said, I am not religious. I was like, what? But my wife is. This morning, as I was coming to this morning, to, to the meeting, I was touched by your emails. So I decided to read it to my wife, which I don't do because of the confidential information between clients. But this one I felt that it was okay to share. Upon hearing the email, she said, what time is the meeting? told him it starts at 9 o'clock, may last about an hour or two. And this is what she told me to tell you before the meeting starts. She said, from the time you start the meeting for about an hour or so, I will be on my knees praying for them. At that moment, something happened. I felt the sense of the Holy Spirit in the room. It was as if the water met its master and started to blush. Turning water into wine kind of moment. It was a prelude of music that changed the temperature and atmosphere. And the meeting started it. Everyone's eyes were on me. As if they're saying, it's not our responsibility. Technically, it was all of us' responsibility. Owner in particular changed the structural system on us. We have already designed a particular structural system that's more suitable for that type of structure. When the biddings came in, it was too expensive, and they taught us to change structural system. So we had to sort of redesign it all against our clear recommendation not to do so. Well documented. The facade designer... They had a little fancy to south design, which is not in the picture. They wanted to keep their design against our recommendation because what they did did not meet the code. In order to meet the code, we had to redesign our beams more shallower, which caused some of those problems. Contractor had some Responsibility because they have not coordinated with their subs. One time in the meeting, the client of ours, not the lawyer, said this to all of us. Tim, talking to me but telling everybody, Tim, I've been having nightmares. I've been having trouble sleeping. I woke up in the middle of the night. And I know 
them, you must be going through the same thing. And then he added, thank you for the encouraging emails. Thank you for the prayers. It made a difference. With that, as I was sitting there quietly, and I finally stood up and said, we all have some responsibilities. However, in this particular situation, if one company does not fully sacrifice, we will all die. We will never be able to have the first opening game in April, which will be embarrassment to the city, will be embarrassment to all the contractors, designers. It will be a total embarrassment to the city of Miami, the state of Florida. There will be uproar. Then the entire nation will find out. And when the entire nation finds out, the whole world will find out. Because this is a professional baseball game. The litigation, the lawsuit, will cause stadium not to be ready for months and maybe perhaps years. So then I said to them, I will take the responsibility. You know, quite frankly, at that time, I had no idea what I was talking about. I didn't really knew at that time the implication of what I just said. Because I don't have that kind of money. We're talking about millions and millions of dollars to fix. There's hundreds and hundreds of beams that's already been erected, constructed. Well, as soon as I said that, all of them, they turned their heads towards guy who was sitting a little bit distant from me who was our company's insurance representative. All of a sudden, he felt the heat. He remained silent for a few seconds. Then he got up and said, I've been doing this for many, many years. I came across many engineers and architects and contractors. Many meetings such as this today. But I must say that I have not come across a company like Tamas. Then he paused for another few seconds, and then he continued. Took a deep breath, and he said, we will cover the full amount of the cost. Let's get going. Let's go and fix these cracks. And let's go and enjoy the first game in April. Now, we were all stunned because this doesn't happen. Not from insurance company. Their goal is to minimize their exposure, their share of the cost. Because there are plenty of insurance companies sitting over there. But if that didn't take took place, it would be litigation. If we lost it, we would not be able to have that first game in April, three, four months from that day. In the plane coming back, I said to the Lord, thank you and thank you for revealing yourself and taking the control of the meeting and turning the tense moment into making music moment. It was about doing the right thing. Proverbs 21, 3, once again, to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than the sacrifice, offering, and worshiping. It is about showing in action in making music, not just with the words, 
1 John 3.18, dear children, addressing to all of us, let us not love with the words or speech, but with the action and in truth. When you do the right things, not just doing things right, what do we do? You make music. You make beautiful music. During the defining moments, during the challenges that you face, during that betrayal moments, the letters you write, the encouragement letters that you write, letters of, say, even forgiveness or inspirations, the prayers that you give, Doing the right thing, kind of having the right thing kind of attitude can be not only healing, but the source of the melody and lyric for many, many around you. And that's not all pertaining to that instant. After the repair, it took exactly three months to repair that whole entire four major parking garages. This time contract really pour all the resource and energy trying to get the work done. After the re- repair I reserved two seat, two box seats and invite all of them and we watched the first game together. A few weeks later I visited every single one of those people the client, the designer, engineers, the contractors. And I went there. The top management, top leaders of the firm, they all showed up. They were just, I didn't even ask for them. They were kind of curious. They sat down and the first question out of their mouth was, Tim, why did you do what you did? Why did you take on that responsibility and sacrifice? What a a great defining moment to share with them the concept that we talked about the other two weeks ago. The water meets its master and blushed. I said, one had to die for so that all of us can live. And my faith in Christ told me so. I said these words. If I not sacrifice, you and I would not be sitting in this meeting. You would probably refuse to see me. But we're here together. And I could see that they were genuinely, genuinely touched. And the next statement they said was, we want to do more work together with you. Every single one of them. Later, about a year later, the project manager from the city, Jerry, he calls me up. Tim, I see that you are beginning to grow again. I would love to be hired by you. Why do I tell you all this story? Because this is the gospel. Doing the right thing is the gospel. Just believing in the Christ is what you need. That's all you need for that grace. But to be favored by God. This is gospel. Second thing is that we too can turn the situation into musical moments. Just like the water met its master and blushed. In Christ, we blush. We should be blushing. And when when we blush, we become alive. In Christ, when we blush... We transform, and we should transform, and we must transform. And when we do the right things in Christ, 
we make amazing music that God is pleased. Psalm 101, verse 1 and 2, puts all that we just talked about in very nice closing. I will sing of steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord, I will make music. Verse 2, I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. Verse 1, love and justice. When we do the right things before the Lord, it will be music now to our Lord. And that's the way to find favor in his eyes. Verse 2. To remain blameless. To remain blameless. Is not to blame others. Being honest. Is doing the right thing. Walking with integrity. Is doing the right thing. But walking with integrity of the heart is truly making music of the heart. Let us pray. Father, you first made amazing music to us all. And that was sending your son to us. That was music, music of comfort, music of hope, music of regaining our strength. Father, thank you for what your son has done. He came and made so many musics, but particularly the music best summed up with this phrase, the water met its master. And blushed. Father, we want to be now the water that blushes. We want to be water now becomes colorful with the character. We want to be water now that's alive from tasteless to the tasty water, Father. So that we can make music. Not only unto you, but to many around us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray in your son's name. Amen.